Welcome to the Patient Care in a Non-Profiled Environment training. This course is intended for nurses like you who will be using OmniCell cabinets to remove, return, and waste medications for their patients. The course will take approximately 45 minutes to complete. This course is divided into four sections. The first section is called Introduction to OmniCell Cabinets. Here you'll learn about OmniCell Cabinets and other hardware you may encounter at your facility. Next, we'll cover various ways of accessing the OmniCell Cabinet. In the third largest section, called Patient Care Tasks, you'll learn about removing, returning, and wasting medications for your patients. The last section focuses on additional tasks you may need to perform at your facility, such as inventory cycle counts or simple reporting. OmniCell offers a variety of cabinets and cabinet configurations to fit your facility's needs. One-cell cabinets offer a larger capacity for storing medications and supplies. Two-cell cabinets offer increased capacity for storing medications and supplies. Three-cell cabinets are OmniCell's largest cabinets and offer even more capacity for storing medications and supplies. Half-cell cabinets can support up to 13 drawers of any security level. Tabletop cabinets fit most space-restricted areas, such as operating rooms and cath labs. Let's have a quick look at the cabinet hardware. The fingerprint scanner allows you to easily access the system with just your fingerprint. Each cabinet contains a color touch screen with touchscreen technology. You'll interact with cabinets primarily using this screen. Your cabinet may be configured with various types of shelves with metal locking lid drawers or open, configurable drawers. All drawers and shelves use guiding lights to guide you to the location of your selected item. After selecting an item on the screen, the guiding light on the matrix drawer will flash. Follow the light to locate the correct bin and remove the medication. After selecting an item on the screen, the guiding light on the locking lid drawer will flash. Follow the light to locate the correct bin. Open the bin and remove the medication. After selecting an item on the screen, the guiding lights on the shelves will flash. Open the door and press the green button to select the item. Pressing the green button will reorder the medication, ensuring that the item is always available. Then remove the medication. Use the Safety Stock Scanner to scan item barcodes when issuing an item to a patient, returning an item back to the cabinet, or verifying the item selected. It's also used by pharmacy for restocking purposes. An external return bin is a large capacity repository for item return. After you initiate the on-screen process, the lid unlocks and you can return an item to the pharmacy through this bin. Raise the lid and deposit the item. Once you close the lid, it locks and only designated personnel can empty it. Cabinets are equipped with a receipt printer and the option of a label printer. Use the receipt printer to generate waste and return receipts. Wrap them around returned items so that the pharmacy can associate these items with patients. Use the label printer to generate patient-specific medication labels. You'll interact with cabinets using the color touch screen. While there is a keyboard, there is often no need to use it because you can accomplish most tasks by interacting with the screen. There are many functions accessible to you from the login screen. You don't have to be logged on to access these functions. Let's start by changing the volume and screen brightness. Touch Change Volume or Brightness. Plus or minus volume and brightness buttons allow you to increase or decrease the cabinet speaker volume and the brightness of the screen. To return, touch Previous Screen or exit. Touch About This Omni to view system information. To return, touch Previous Screen or exit. The barcode item check functionality is used primarily by pharmacy. Here you can register a new scanner or check an item's safety stock barcode. We'll cover these items in the safety stock training.
an online quick reference guide is available to help you perform common tasks. After logon, you can access the guide by pressing F1 on the keyboard. Once the guide opens, you may scroll through the help sections. If you're looking for an answer to a particular topic, use Search to find it. About how to log on to an Omnicell cabinet. You can use your user ID and password, or a fingerprint. Initially, you'll be required to log on with your user ID. To do so, ask your system administrator to issue you a user ID. Then, attempt to access the Color Touch system by typing in your user ID. The system will prompt you to enter a new password. Simply follow the on screen prompts to create a new password. Your system administrator will add your user ID to the database so that you can begin using Omnicell cabinets. Enter your user ID and press Enter. You are prompted to enter a new password. Touch OK to confirm. Retype your password. Touch the Change Your Password button. When you are successfully logged in, your name displays at the bottom of the screen. When you are done, always touch Exit to log out. You can change your password in user menus, which you access by touching the user menus button. Depending on the policies at your facility, you may be required to have a strong password. The use of strong passwords is set at the Omnicell server. If enabled, strong passwords must contain three of the following four elements. A lowercase letter, an uppercase letter, a number from 0 to 9, and a special character such as a number or dollar sign. Please note that if you forget your password, you'll need to contact your system administrator. Omnicell cannot help you recover your password or create a new one. Log in to the system. The patient list displays. Touch the main menu button. The main menu screen displays. Select user menus. You may see various buttons, depending on your user privileges. Touch the Change Your Password button. Enter your old password and press Enter. Enter your new password and press Enter. Retype your password. Touch the Change Your Password button. Your password has been changed. You can now log out. Let's have a closer look at logging in with your fingerprint. If you have never been enrolled, contact your designated fingerprint registrar to help you enroll your fingerprints. You can enroll two fingers, a primary and an alternate. You can use either finger to log on. You are not required to use both. You may need to re-enroll your fingerprint. For example, if you cut or burn a finger. You don't need a registrar to re-enroll your fingerprint. However, if you wish to re-enroll your fingerprint, you must access the cabinet with a fingerprint. Scan your fingerprint to log on. The patient list appears. Touch Main Menu. The main menu appears. Select User Menus. Touch Re-enroll your fingerprint. Note that this button is only available when you logged on with your fingerprint. Scan either your primary or alternate finger to verify your fingerprint. Touch Next. You can also select or change the finger as needed. Perform two scans to determine the best finger for your primary finger. The scan image will appear in this window. If both scans are accepted, you'll be automatically brought to the enrollment screen. 
you need to scan your fingerprint four times to re-enroll. When you scan your fourth fingerprint, you'll be taken to the completion screen. The Fingerprint Enrollment Complete screen informs you about your enrolled fingers. Touch Next. Follow the prompts to repeat the process for the alternate finger. Touch Finish. The Fingerprint Enrollment Complete screen informs you about your enrolled fingers. Touch Finish to complete the re-enrollment. Touch Exit to log out and test if you can log on with your new fingerprint. In this section, you'll learn about patient care tasks, including removing, returning, and wasting medications. Before we have a closer look at these tasks, it's important that you understand some key concepts. First, we'll look at Patient Medication Accounts, or PMAs. A PMA is created every time you issue a medication to a patient. It's unique to one user, one medication, and one patient. All dispenses generate a PMA, but some items, such as narcotics, may require additional accountability. For these items, waste documentation is required for partial dose dispenses where the medication order amount is less than the package size. Let's have a look at this example. When you dispense an item with the intended dose of full package size, for example, a 4 mg vial of morphine, issue the full dose and then come back to dispense another 4 mg vial of morphine for the same patient. The first PMA is automatically closed. However, if you dispense a 4 mg vial of morphine with the intended partial dose of 2 mg, the system will keep this PMA open until you complete waste documentation. If you dispense another 4 mg of morphine for the same patient prior to completing waste documentation for the previous dose, the outstanding amount will be cumulative which means the system will add the two dispensed doses together as 8 mg and will expect to waste 4 mg. If you remove two doses for the same patient in a single dispense, for example, two vials of midazolam 2 mg, and you only give your patient 1 mg, you'll need to document what happened with the remaining 3 mg. Remember, that returns must always be completed first. Return one vial of midazolam, 2 mg, and waste the remaining 1 mg to close the PMA. During waste, you'll be required to enter the actual administered amount. You'll be required to enter the intended dose information. This information is needed to reconcile the account and close the PMA. If the item requires waste documentation, you're responsible for recording what happened with that item. This accounting is system-wide and allows you to waste and return medications on different cabinets as needed. Let's have a closer look at how to remove medications for your patients from the Omnicell cabinet. After you log on to the cabinet, you'll see a patient list. There are three types of patient lists, a global list that includes all patients, a local list that includes only patients in your work area, and a partial dose list that includes only patients with undocumented medication issues. All lists are arranged alphabetically by patient last name. The Sort by Room button allows you to sort patients by room. Occasionally, you may need to add a new patient if your facility does not allow all users to see the global list of patients, or if the patient has not been registered by admitting. For example, an emergency department patient who hasn't been registered yet. Before adding a patient, always verify that a patient is not on the global list. 
enter the patient's account number if you know it. If you don't, enter as much information about the patient as possible, such as date of birth, OR number, etc. If the patient's name does not appear in any of the patient lists, you will need to add the patient to the system. Touch the Add New Patient button. You'll be prompted to enter the new patient information. Our patient's last name is Abram. The first name is Joe. Enter the patient's assigned account number if you have access to it. If not, type in as much identifying information as possible, such as date of birth. Touch Add New Patient. The patient's screen appears. The patient was added to the system. Touch the Patient Care button to return to the patient list. The patient was added as a temporary TMP patient to the patient list. You begin the process of removing items from a patient's record. At the bottom of the patient's records are tabs. You will be removing medications from the stocked meds list. This list contains all items stocked in this cabinet. Note that items stocked in supply zones do not display on this list. After you select items from the stocked meds list, you can press the Display Meds to Remove tab to view a filtered list of items you have selected for removal. Occasionally, you may need to have a witness present to verify your transaction. Using a witness helps your facility conform to the Joint Commission standards by documenting that medications are kept in a secure location and issued according to the best medication dispensing practices. You may need a witness when issuing selected high-risk medications and partial doses, wasting and returning, resolving discrepancies, and performing cycle counts, also known as end-of-shift narcotic counts. When required, you must have your witness present to enter their credentials. Otherwise, you will not be permitted to complete the transaction. Let's look at how to remove a medication from the cabinet. In this demonstration, we'll be removing acetaminophen for patient Jennifer Alkin. After logging in, select the patient. The patient screen appears. Touch Remove Meds. The stocked meds list appears. Select Acetaminophen from the list. You may be prompted with a dispensing alert. Review the alert and touch OK. The Remove Meds screen appears. We need to issue two tablets, 650 milligrams. When done, touch OK. The quantity to remove displays. Touch Remove Now. Follow the on-screen prompts and guiding lights to remove the medication. Access the bin to remove the medication. Close the bin when done. Then close the drawer. This concludes the demonstration. To remove multiple medications, you'll follow nearly the same process you use to remove a single medication. The main difference is that you select all of the medications that you need to remove in the Color Touch system before physically removing items from the cabinet. In this demonstration, we'll remove multiple medications for patient Jennifer Alkin. After logging in, select the patient. The patient screen appears. Touch Remove Meds. The stocked meds list appears. We'll remove morphine, promethazine, and sodium chloride. Select morphine 4 mg. The remove meds screen appears. We need to issue 4 mg. Touch OK to confirm. The quantity to remove displays. Next, search for promethazine. 
the Remove Med screen appears. Touch OK to confirm. Search for sodium chloride. You can touch the Display Meds to Remove tab to review all medications you selected for removal. Selected medications display. Touch Remove Now. Follow the on-screen prompts and guiding lights to remove all medications. At this point, you would press the green flashing bin button for sodium chloride and remove the item. Follow the guiding lights to locate promethazine. Remove promethazine and close the drawer. Next, locate the morphine. When removing narcotics, you may be prompted to perform a count back. Count the items in the bin prior to removal of the item and enter the count. Remove morphine and close the drawer. When done, the patient screen appears again. This concludes the demonstration. To remove a kit, touch the Remove Kits button. When the list of available kits displays, touch the name of a kit. In this demonstration, we'll remove a kit for a patient. After logging on, select your patient. The patient screen appears. Touch the Remove Kits button. Available Kits display. We'll select the first kit. You can touch each item to change quantities from those defined in the kit. We'd like to remove two propofols instead of one. Select the item. Type in the desired quantity or use the plus and minus buttons to adjust the quantity as needed. Touch OK. When satisfied with your selection, touch Remove Now. Follow the on-screen prompts and guiding lights to remove all medications. Open the drawer and bin to remove fentanyl citrate. If prompted, verify and confirm the count. Close the bin and drawer and continue to the next medication. Remove propofol. When done, always remember to touch Exit to log out. If you remove two doses for the same patient in a single dispense, for example, two vials of midazolam 2 mg, and you only give your patient 1 mg, you'll need to document what happened with the remaining 3 mg. Remember that returns must always be completed first. Return one vial of midazolam, 2 mg, and waste the remaining 1 mg to close the PMA. During waste, you'll be required to enter the actual administered amount. Depending on your facility's policy, you may need to return medications to the external return bin or back to a cabinet. A return medication should be unopened with the packaging still intact. In this demonstration, you'll learn how to return a medication. Please note that only unopened and undamaged medications may be returned back to the cabinet or the return bin. After logging on, select your patient. The patient screen appears. Touch the Remove Meds button. The Meds Eligible for Return list displays, listing all your items that can be returned. You can touch the All Meds button to see a list of medications removed for this patient by all users. We'll return morphine and prednisone. First, select morphine. The quantity to return is populated automatically. Touch OK. Next, select prednisone. Again, the quantity to return is auto-populated. Touch OK. The quantity to return displays. 
you can select Display Meds to Return to see the list of medications you have selected for return. Touch Return Now. You may be required to have a witness present to return narcotics. Have your witness enter their credentials. If prompted, select a return reason or type in your own. We'll select patient condition changed as our return reason. Next, touch OK. Place the medication inside the return bin and close the lid. Next, return the prednisone back to the cabinet. Verify the item's expiration date when returning it back to the bin. Close the bin and drawer when done. Remember to touch exit to log out. When the system detects that you have an outstanding waste for one or more medications, it will prompt you upon login that you have partial dose issues that require waste documentation. Then you'll select the partial dose list that is populated with patient names who have undocumented medication issues and document the outstanding doses. While dispensing a medication from the Omnicell cabinet, you have the opportunity to waste a partial dose during the issue of an item. Touch the Waste Partial Dose button to initiate the waste. In this demonstration, you'll learn how to waste a partial dose of morphine while dispensing it from the cabinet. We'll follow the previously reviewed process to select a medication for removal. First, select morphine. Notice that the intended dose is 4 milligrams. We only need 2 milligrams for our patient. We'll change the dose to 2 milligrams. The system warns you that the dose you are removing is exceeding the intended dose by 2 milligrams. Touch OK. The system will prompt you again that the issue amount exceeds the intended dose. Confirm the message by touching OK. You can see that the medication is now selected for removal. Touch Remove Now. The system informs you that you'll need a witness to remove the medication. You can either continue or cancel the removal. We'll proceed by touching the Continue button. Follow the on-screen prompts and guiding lights to access the correct bin. Prompt your witness to enter their credentials. Open the flashing bin. If prompted for countback, verify the quantity of items in the bin before the removal and confirm it by touching the Yes button. If you find out that the quantity does not match, you would touch No and type in the correct quantity. We'll touch Yes. At this point, you'll have the option to waste the partial dose. To do so, touch the Waste Partial Dose button. We'll administer 2 mg and waste 2 mg. The Waste Amount field is pre-populated, but you can change it if needed. Next, touch OK. You may need to have a witness present to waste a partial dose. If prompted, have your witness enter their credentials. Remove the medication. Close the drawer when done. Waste the partial dose according to your facility policies. Remember to log out by touching Exit. You may need to waste a medication after removing it from a cabinet. ColorTouch maintains a partial dose patient list that includes all patients with outstanding waste. After selecting a patient from this list, you'll touch the Waste Meds button, and all the medications that require waste will display on the Meds Requiring Waste tab. In this demonstration, you'll learn how to document waste after you have removed a medication from the Omnicell cabinet. If you previously removed partial doses of medications and did not document the waste, 
the system will prompt you upon login that you have partial dose issues that require waste documentation. Confirm the message by clicking OK. The patient list displays. You can select the partial dose list to see all your patients with undocumented medication issues. Select the patient for whom you wish to waste a medication. We'll select Blake Casa. Next, touch the Waste Meds button. All medications requiring waste documentation display on the Meds Requiring Waste list. The All Meds, My Meds button allows you to toggle between medications that were removed by you or all users. Next, we'll select the Morphine. The Wasting Meds screen displays. You can review the amount you have issued for the patient, the administration amount, and the waste amount. You can change the waste and admin amounts as needed. Next, you'll need to enter the waste reason or choose one from the list of reasons. In this case, our patient's condition has changed. The selected reason now displays. Touch OK. If prompted, have your witness enter their credentials. Notice that the waste amount is now displayed next to the medication. Touch Record Waste Now. Waste the medication according to your facility policies. When done, always remember to touch Exit to log out. It's very important to know what to do when discrepancies are created in the system. The Color Touch system considers a discrepancy to be the difference between the expected amount of an item stocked in the cabinet and the actual amount. When an item is accessed and the quantity in the bin differs from what the system expects it to be, then a discrepancy is created. This could be triggered during issue, return, or a cycle count. If discrepancies exist on the cabinet, the Resolve Discrepancy button remains highlighted even when no one is logged onto the system. In this demonstration, you'll learn how to resolve discrepancies. When there are unresolved discrepancies, the Resolve Discrepancy button is highlighted prior to logging on. When you touch the button, the system informs you about the number of discrepancies on this cabinet that need to be resolved. In our case, we have two discrepancies that need to be resolved. Let's return to the logon screen by touching OK. To resolve discrepancies, we'll log on to the system. The patient list appears. Touch the main menu button. Select the Resolve Discrepancy button. We'll resolve discrepancies for control levels 2 through 5. Next, touch the Resolve Discrepancy button. The Discrepancy Resolution screen appears. You can see that the discrepancy was created because the expected quantity does not match the quantity found in the bin. The expected quantity is 29 and there are 30 items in the bin. In our case, this has been caused by an incorrect countback. We'll go ahead and select the list of resolve reasons. We'll choose Error in Previous Countback Quantity as our reason. The selected reason now displays. Next, you can either select the Resolve Discrepancy or the Next Discrepancy button. We'll touch Next Discrepancy. The system prompts you to confirm that you wish to resolve this discrepancy. Touch OK. To resolve narcotic discrepancies, you'll need to have a witness present. Have your witness enter their credentials. Touch OK. Follow the same process to resolve the next discrepancy. You can also print a discrepancy receipt. Your receipt will look similar to this one. Touch the Resolve Discrepancy button. Have your witness enter their credentials. Touch OK. The system informs you that there are no more discrepancies. 
Touch OK. Remember to log out when finished. Please note that the Resolve Discrepancy button is no longer highlighted and the cabinet is now free of discrepancies. Depending on your facility's policies and procedures, you may need to perform additional tasks on OmniCell cabinets. These tasks include reviewing and responding to dispensing alerts, performing countbacks, performing inventory cycle counts, managing overrides, and generating and printing reports. When removing medications from cabinets, you may need to respond to various types of dispensing alerts. Dispensing alerts are informational messages, notifications, or sets of questions and answers that display when you are removing, returning, or wasting a medication. Informational alerts provide read-only patient safety information or instructions during a medication transaction. If you see this type of alert, review it, and then press OK. Text entry alerts require you to enter a response. After you type in a response, press OK to continue. Single answer alerts require you to choose one answer as a response. After you select the response, press OK to continue. Multi-answer alerts allow you to choose multiple answers as a response. Once selected, press OK to continue. You may be required to verify the quantity of items in a bin when removing or returning medications. The system normally prompts you to verify a count on narcotics when an amount is in question or to resolve a discrepancy. You may also be required to do a blind count, in which case the system will not show you the expected quantity in the bin. Other times, you may do a normal count and the expected quantity will display. This option is configured according to your facility's policies and procedures. Upon opening a drawer to remove an item, ColorTouch may prompt you to count another medication in the same drawer. This may happen if a narcotic is placed in a lower security drawer because of space limitations in a cabinet. In accordance with your facility's policies, you may be required to complete the end-of-shift narcotic count. It may be part of your facility's routine inventory process. In this demonstration, you'll learn how to perform a routine inventory cycle count. After logging on, the patient's screen appears. Touch the main menu button. The main menu screen displays. Touch the Inventory Menus button. The Inventory Menu screen displays. Touch Cycle Count. At this point, you can either continue with Open Cycle Count by opening the drawer you wish to count, or select Guided Cycle Count. We'll first look at how to perform a Guided Cycle Count, and after that, we'll quickly review an Open Cycle Count. Let's begin with Guided Cycle Count by selecting the Guided Cycle Count button. Select the control levels to be counted and indicate whether to count only the items that were touched or untouched since the last cycle count. We'll select Touched and Control Levels 2 through 5. After selecting your filters, you can touch the Show Bin Count button to see the number of bins with items that need to be counted. We have 18 items to count. Touch OK. Select Count Now to begin counting. Follow the guiding lights and on-screen prompts to access the bins that have items to be counted. You may need to have a witness present to count narcotics. If prompted, have your witness enter their credentials. Open the bin, count the medication, and enter the count. Follow the on-screen prompts and continue counting all the items. If you need to pause the cycle count, simply touch Exit. 
Confirm that you wish to exit the cycle count by selecting Yes. To resume the cycle count, log back into the cabinet. Select Main Menu, Inventory Menus, Cycle Count, Guided Cycle Count. Now you'll see the option to resume the count. Note that only the user that pauses the cycle count can resume the cycle count. Now you would continue counting the items until you complete the count. Let's quickly review the workflow for an open cycle count. We'll follow the same process to access the cycle count screen. Log on to the cabinet. Select Main Menu, Inventory Menus, Cycle Count. At this point, you'll open the drawer or the door to access the desired bin to count. Upon opening the drawer or door, the Flash Uncounted Bins button appears. We'll select the button and begin the count. Once again, when counting narcotics, you may need to have a witness present. Have your witness enter their credentials. Enter the count and touch OK. Now you would continue counting the items until you complete the count. When done, remember to touch exit to log out. An override allows you to issue an item that is stocked in the cabinet independent of the current medication order. Overrides are based on user permissions and how different medications are configured in the pharmacy. For example, you can use the Stocked Items tab to remove a medication when a new order has been written by a physician and the physician is there to supervise the administration. Another likely scenario may occur if medications are not being sent from the system server. Occasionally, you may need to view and print certain color touch reports. Reports provide a history of activity for a specific cabinet. Commonly used reports are transaction by item, transaction by user, and transaction by patient. You want to look at all issue transactions for control levels 2 through 5. Begin by selecting the Main Menu button. The Main Menu screen displays. Touch the Reports button. A list of available reports displays. We'd like to look at the Transaction by Item report. Next, we'll touch Select All to include all items. Use the available filters to narrow down your search. We'll select Control Levels 2 through 5 and only items for which waste is required. Next, touch Run Report. Review the details on the report. Here you can see that Jane Solo issued 4 mg of morphine with intended dose of 2 mg for patient Jennifer Adkins. You can view the next report by touching the Next Page button. You can also use the Print This Page or Print All Pages buttons to print the reports. The printed report will look similar to this one. Touch Reports to return to the Reports menu. The other transaction report types allow you to view transactions by a specific patient or user. Occasionally, you may also need to review med orders reports. All other report types are primarily used by pharmacy. When done, remember to touch exit to log out. Thank you for viewing this course. More training is available on myomnicell.com.